Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the Gaming Rules video log for the month of September 2018. This is being recorded on the 2nd of October, so I've managed to get this one in fairly quick. And I'm going to be running through some of the things that I went through in September, the content that I produced, uh, a few other random bits of information, and then moving on to October and what's happening in October. So, as always, at the start of my videos, I like to give a shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you, a lot of the content that I would make, including this video, but a lot of the other content I create as well, would simply not be possible. Uh, and as those people who've been following me know that the last couple of months have been a very tough month, and the Patreon has meant a lot to me over the last couple of months. I mean, it'll still mean a lot to me moving forward, but I mean, it, it has been very supportive. Um, We've had a new, new, a few new supporters in the month of September, so I'm going to go through those now, and then we'll do the winner of the contest from last month. So, we have a new executive producer, uh, brand new, Ian Hayward. Ian's been a friend of mine for, uh, I've lost track now, almost 20 years. We used to game together at the Hemel Games Club, way back when. Um, and it's great that I'm still in contact with Ian, and uh, we play games together at conventions. Well, more I teach and he plays. Um, I've also had a number of people upgrade their pledges to executive producer. Uh, which is also really good. So, uh, the first one is Mom Gamer. Thank you very much. Uh, and we need to talk soon about that thing that, that we're talking about. Um, Michael Nicoluk, aka Happy Gamer, you've upgraded your pledge to executive producer. I think just because you wanted me to try and pronounce your uh, your name again. And hopefully I got it right this time. So, thank you very much, Michael. Um, also, uh, Chariton Kalatzidis, uh, aka Harry. Thank you very much, Harry, for your support and upgrading your pledge. Uh, Leanne Weaver, Leanne's been helpful for me in more ways than she probably knows. So thank you very much, Leanne, and, and great to have your support at executive producer level two. Um, Francesco Bacchelli, I think the last time I pronounced your name, I inserted some extra characters, so hopefully I've pronounced it right this time. So again, thank you very much for your increased support. Uh, and finally, Jack, uh, aka Board Game Geek CA, over on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, thank you very much for your support all the way from the West Coast of America. So they're the new executive producers. Uh, producer levels, we have a few new producer levels. We have Astro Boy, thank you very much. Uh, Damien Cosgrove, thank you very much, Damien. Uh, always like chatting with you on various forums and stuff. And good to see you at the weekend. Uh, Danielle, all the way over from Rome, aka Crack and TDG. Danielle does uh, board game rulebook translations. And has done a couple of translations of rulebooks that I've been involved with. Um, so thank you very much for your support. Laura Jane Weaver, uh, no relation to, um, uh, to Liana, I don't think. Um, but anyway, thank you for your support, Laura. Uh, Matt Zittrain, thank you very much for your support, Matt. And a special shout out. Uh, Matt helped me overcome one of my challenges that I set for myself recently, which was uh, to get hold of issue one of the new Warhammer Conquest magazine. I kind of made it a bit of a thing for myself. Um, and I wasn't able to get any and I spent hours phoning round places to try and get hold of a copy. Yeah, I kind of made it a thing uh, and Matt really helped me out. He popped into his local store, uh, bought some and gave me them this weekend. So thank you very much, Matt, for that. Uh, Mike Nudd, UK games designer. Uh, Mike has done a number of games. Um, I don't know if it's fair to say that the biggest one is Dice Hospital, but I'm going to say that anyway. And apologies, Mike, if that's not true. Um, but Mike's designed a bunch of games uh, and I've known him for a few years. And thank you very much for your support, Mike. Uh, Pete Andrews, thank you very much for your support. And Robert Taylor, thank you, Robert. And we'll hopefully get you on Slack at some point soon. A couple of people have upgraded to producer level, which is Abdullah Kazim, thank you very much. And Paul Inkow, thank you very much, Paul, for your support. Uh, for those people who don't know, Paul is Vital Lacerda's lead developer. So all of Vital's games that have come out in the last few years that are absolutely fantastic, they're not just down to Vital, they're... <laughs> <laughs> down down to Paul as well, and a few other people. Paul does a lot of good development work on it. Um, right, some other people who've been supporting me as well at lower levels. So Cassidy Thomas, thank you very much, Cassidy. And I always enjoy seeing your, your tweets. Uh, Dave Moser, thank you very much. Uh, Julia Stanton, who actually won the prize for the, the live Q&A um, earlier this month. So congratulations on that, and thank you for your support. Louisa Berry, who I always like chatting with you at various conventions. Sorry you can't make it to Essen this year. Uh, but thank you for your support. Uh, and also Wouter Debbie Shop. So I've left the best one to last, probably pronounced it wrong, but thank you very much for your support. So that is all of the new Patreon supporters for September. Now, I'll let you into a little bit of a secret, and I think I hinted on this last month. I, I record these video logs at the start of every month, usually. And as I mentioned earlier on, it's now the 2nd of October. Well, the way that Patreon goes is people who are supporters on Patreon 
basically they get the message on the first of the month to say, oh, you're now supporting these people. Here's your Patreon receipt for all of the people you're supporting. And it's the time when a number of people drop out. So it's always, it's always difficult for me to film these video logs and say thank you to all of these people who've been supporting me when literally the last couple of days I've seen all of these people leave. Um, no, obviously everybody has their own reasons for, for dropping their support and that, that's absolutely fine. But, you know, as a content creator who relies on that support, it is always hard seeing these people uh, leave. So every single month that I record this video log, I am doing so trying to sort of say all of the new people that have supported me, whilst in the back of my mind I'm thinking, oh, but all of these people have just left. Anyway, as of right now, 2nd of October lunchtime-ish, nobody has left me in October. So cross fingers. I mean, I might get back to the computer later on today and find that loads of people have left, but nobody has. So that's, that's great. Anyway, on with the contest. So I do a giveaway uh, every month, uh, do a prize draw, randomly decided, going to head over to the computer now to do the prize draw. So here are all of the Patreon supporters, all listed, and yeah, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. So yeah, we've got what, 269? So let's do the draw. So rand between, here's the nice little formula that I like doing, and we have, the winner is number 207, and the winner is Augusti Pelliser. So congratulations to Augusti for winning uh, probably the biggest prize actually, and thank you very much to Lucky Duck Games for for giving all of these uh, prizes away. I'll get in contact with Lucky Duck Games and they can get in contact with you. Uh, and yeah, thank you for your support and congratulations on winning. Now, the contest for this month, which will be chosen on the 1st of November, yeah, um, is to win a the, the core game, the base game version of Hero Master. Now, for those people who don't know, and I'll be mentioning this later on, I interviewed the designer of Hero Master. Hero Master is on Kickstarter right now, uh, so go and back it, but, or well, at least go and have, I'm not telling you to go and back it, I'm telling you to go and have a look at the campaign, see if it's for you, and then back it if you like it. But one lucky Patreon supporter is actually going to win a copy of it uh, this month. So if you are watching this video and you are supporting me on Patreon, then you're in with the chance of winning. Um, if you're watching this video and you don't support me on Patreon, then maybe now's the month if you want to be in with a chance of winning that. So thank you very much to Jamie for donating a copy of Hero Master, um, and good luck to everybody who enters the contest. Right, let's move on to the games that I've been playing this month, which has unfortunately not been many, um, because my personal situation this last month, with everything that's been going on, uh, has meant that I've not actually played that many games. So. I've only got four games on this list, right? And I'm going to start with Keyforge. I've talked about that loads before. Uh, I think I've played three or four more games of Keyforge. I'm still really enjoying it at the moment, and I'm still talking to loads of people about it. Um, and at Tabletop Gaming Live over the weekend, I was basically telling loads of people about it. So, yeah, I'm still enjoying playing Keyforge. I am also playing it online. I'm not recording my online plays, but there is a website that you can play online. Uh, it's not officially authorised by Fantasy Flight whatsoever, but it can't be hurting the game because lots of people are playing on there, um, and that's really good. So I'm enjoying that as well. Star Wars Destiny, which I found while having a clear out, I've suddenly gone back to that and realised this is really enjoyable. Um, it's a card game, but it's got dice in it, but it's just really good, and it really captures the theme of Star Wars. So I'm playing quite a bit of Star Wars Destiny at the moment, played that three times. Uh, another game I've been played, going on to the Euro games, uh, is Teo Tiwakan. I think I've pronounced it right this time, we'll see, but I've played that twice. Now the first time I played this was a learning game in the four of us sat around the table and none of us knew how to play. Um, I'd in fact tried uh, watching a bit of a video earlier that day on how to play and fell asleep, so that what happens when I watch videos. Um, but basically all four of us learned from the rule book. It was a long game because we were all learning from the rule book, uh, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. I'm not saying it's a perfect game, uh, and if I do do a review of it later this month, I will go into a, a, a bit more detail, but I did really enjoy the play. I came last. I don't really care anymore. I just messed around and did various things. And then I played it again, I think it was the week after, uh, where I taught three other people how to play. Or was it two? I think it might have been a three-player game. I can't remember now. But I came last in that one as well. Um, but that was one where I actually taught everybody else how to play, and then we played. Um, so I definitely want to play that more. Really enjoying that. Um, and I've been playing Detective, so the new game from Portal Games, which is, uh, you know, based on 
the Sherlock Holmes consulting detective in that you go somewhere, you read some clues and everything else. But it's set in a modern setting and it uses access to the internet, uh, a kind of fake database that they've thrown together of all of these people. And it actually combines real world situations and real world things that have happened in history. And it combines that quite well. Now, we are three cases in. I'll say we're three cases in. The first case we did was case six, which is now available from the portal website. It was a demo case. It took us about an hour and a half. Uh, it's the one that's used at conventions to demo the game. And we basically played through that to see if uh, Vicky and my dad would like the game. My dad is currently living with us and we wanted to find a game that would be something that would be good for us all to play together. And we enjoyed it. So then we started on the actual proper campaign. Now the campaign is five cases. They are all linked together, even though each one is an individual story about a particular thing. It is all part of a bigger picture and there's a connection between them. So if you are playing it, I would recommend the same group, definitely, and don't leave it too long between each session, because otherwise you'll forget what's been going on. So we've played the first two cases of the five case campaign, uh, very much enjoying it, which we were pretty sure that we were going to anyway, because we like the, the these kind of detective style games where we have to, you know, go places and everything else. It does do certain things, obviously different from... Uh, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective in that you track your time when you're going to certain locations and there's only a limited amount of time that you have per day. Um, there are things that you need to look up on this da database. You can match fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Very much enjoying it. Um, the only downsides I'm finding with it, I I'd heard various opinions on the text and the text wasn't particularly great. Well, my opinion on it is that the text is absolutely fine, right? I was expecting like typos, grammar errors, badly written, badly translated, things like that. None of that whatsoever. The text is all absolutely fine. There's just a little bit too much of it. Now, when we were doing case one, this was this was fine. You know, we, we go to the police department, we walk up the four flights of stairs, we wait for Sarah to bring us the files, we start reading through the files, we have a coffee, it sets the scene and, and that's fine. But then every time you go there and you get similar text. I mean, it's not exactly the same text, but it's similar text. Oh, we go and, oh, Sarah's there, right, okay, yeah, she gets the files, right, we get the files. Is she having a cup? Yeah, we'll have the coffee. So it's written in a different way. It's not just copied and pasted, but it's very, very similar information. And there's a lot of that, a little bit too much fluff and scene setting before it gets into the actual details of it. Um, that's the only downside, really. We're, we're really enjoying it. And we've got three more cases to go and I can't wait to play more. Um, and that's it. So that's all of the games that I played um, in September. Right, so let's move on to the content that I produced in uh, September. Um, on, a, on a personal note, uh, personal note I'm, I'm quite pleased that I've managed to create this content. Um, obviously with the death of my mum last week, uh, last month and the funeral, the impact that that's had on me personally and us as a family and the way that our lives are you know, changing because of it, um, it's been a real struggle. For me to carry on this month, it has been a real struggle. I've had issues uh, concentrating, uh, focusing and things like that. And I've used work to try and help me get through that. So I've not been 100% productive, but I am pleased with the content that I've made. So, Keyflow, the new game from Richard Breeze in the Key series of games, not counting Keyforge, which is not a Richard Breeze game. I did the official rules video for that. And that is available now. So if you want to learn any more about Keyflow, it will be available at Essen. So if you're going to Essen and you want to see what that game's about, then go and check out that video. I also did the rules video for Brass Lancashire. And I have to say, Roxley Games were very good. And when I, I'd arranged to do the video before things happened, and then I went to them and I said, look, guys, I'm really sorry, but obviously personal situation has meant that this, this work might have to get delayed. Um, and they were very, you know, understanding of that. But I did manage to get it done on, on the time that we agreed to do it. And I'm really happy with it. The Brass Lancashire video, Brass is a classic game. It's a classic Martin Wallace game. I love what Roxley have done with it. They've taken a game which had a really bad old rule book, awful artwork, and just, it was a great game, but it just didn't have the look and the feel. And they've picked it up and what they've done, what's really nice to see, what they've done is done a fantastic job with it. And what's really nice to see is all of this, this, um, you know, this horde of um, modern, modern gamers, you know, cause I've been gaming for, <laughs> yeah, 
uh, you know, a long time, but there's a lot of people that are relatively new to gaming, you know, in the last few years, and they're picking up Brass and they're playing it and they're loving it. And that's really good to see because Brass is a an older game. Uh, so anyway, Brass Lancashire, if you want to learn how to play that, then please head over and check out that. I also did a pod blast. I uh, interviewed Jamie Noblefriar about his game Hero Master. So yeah, go and have a listen to that. It was nice chatting with Jamie. And my podcast is the actual podcast podcast, not counting the pod blast, which is just short interviews. Podcast has kind of fallen a little bit by the wayside in the last couple of months, and I really wanted to pick that up, and I did. So that went live this week, podcast 64. Uh, the topic of discussion was dealing with difficult gamers, and I was talking with Kathleen Mercury, who's got a lot of experience in, in this and how to deal with people. So uh, yeah, go and check that out. I also did three unboxing videos because they're fun. I mean, they take me a bit to do, but I like them. People seem to like them. A lot of people don't like them. Fine, they don't need to watch them, but I quite like doing them. So I'm going to be doing a few more random unboxing videos here and there just for just for games that I get. And I did a live Q&A as well, um, which I'd missed in August for obvious reasons, but I did it in September. Um, so yeah, so that, that was quite good fun as well. Now, I'm going to do something a little different at this point. And I'd like your feedback on whether this is something that you are happy to see in, in these videos, or it's something that you don't want to see in these videos. But I was contacted by one of my Patreon supporters, Christian Sauer, who's actually designed a game himself, which is on Kickstarter right now. Now, he contacted me because he wanted to send me a copy of the game to see if I would like it, play it with my friends, possibly do a review of it, possibly talk about it and, and everything else. And, and that's absolutely fine. I get a lot of requests like that. And unfortunately, my backlog of games that I have for games that people have sent me to have a look at, play with my local gaming group and talk about is just getting bigger and bigger. And I've got quite a lot of bad feelings about that pile getting bigger and bigger. So I had to say to Christian, I said, look, I'm really sorry, but if you were to send it to me, it would just get added to a pile and it might not be played for three or four months. I don't really know. And his game's on Kickstarter right now. But what I said to him is I said, look, you're a Patreon supporter of mine. I will give your game a shout out on the video log. So this is effectively sort of advertising his game. But I figured, why not? And as I said, if people who are watching this video don't don't want this kind of stuff in there, then, then please let me know. But basically, I've got a short elevator pitch, <clears throat> excuse me, short elevator pitch about the game, which I've written up and I've put somewhere. Where have I put it? I've put it over here on my thing. Here he is. Right, so, designed by Christian, the game is called Warigin, I think, war -igin. Um I will put some links in the show notes, and I'm going to put some pictures on screen now as I'm talking. So, it's a highly competitive two to three player game uh, for players who are looking for exciting tactical matches in an ever-changing asymmetric game. As I say, it's on Kickstarter right now, it's a small Kickstarter campaign. The game is perfect for short sessions in between, as well as for extended board games evenings. And it creates long-term excitement with its combination of quick matches, high replayability, and cross-match scoring. It's got a combination of hidden movement, powerful action cards, and exploitation of global events. And it's the goal of all players to conquer an opponent's fortress in an unequal setup. So yes, it's an asymmetric game, high levels of player interaction. And as I say, if you like what I'm saying, and you've seen the pictures and you like the look of it, then head on over to the Kickstarter and check it out and see, see what you think. So that's Warigin. Right, now, moving on to what I've got planned for October. So the Dice Hospital rules video was actually completed uh, start of September? Yeah, I think it, end of August, start of September. Um, but Caesar from Alicat Games wanted me to put it out when he felt it was ready. And we've agreed that that's going live today. It's probably going live in about an hour's time from the moment I'm recording this video. Um, now, the Dice Hospital, it was the first rules video that I did after my mother passed away. So there is a there is a dedication to her at the end of the video, which I felt was appropriate. But that's going live today. So if you want to learn how to play Dice Hospital, you can go and check that out. Uh, I'm also going to be working on the Cerebria how to play video. And that is my big job that I need to get done before Essen. Uh, script writing will start tomorrow. Cerebria is a pretty heavy complex game, so I'm dreading it. But as many people have told me, if one person can do it, Paul, you can do it. And that 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 fills me with the confidence. And I've tackled heavy games in the past, so I shouldn't be that worried about it. But, you know, I am a little worried about it. But it's going to be a big job. 
uh, and I'm going to try and get that done before Essen. Also, podcast 65, which will be the pre-Essen podcast with me, Tom Heath from Slicker Drips, Matt Evans from Creaking Shelves, talking about all the games that we're looking forward to that are coming out at Essen this year. I'm hoping to release that probably the week before Essen. Um, my reviews... They've, they've kind of fallen by the side. Now, I need, I do want to get back on and do the reviews. I was going to do the Madeira review on Friday, but then I got caught up with so many other things and I had to pack before I left for Tabletop Gaming Live. Um, but I do want to get on and do the Madeira review, possibly this afternoon even. And then I need to go back and start asking people what reviews you want me to do in future. I am still planning for November and December to be my catch-up month. So to catch up on all of the reviews that I've not done... Um, you know, I, I'm basically turning down a lot of work that's coming in at the moment. A couple of reasons. I need to cut back on my workload a lot, but also I want to give something more back to my Patreon supporters. So I want to catch up on the reviews that I've missed. Uh, I want to do more playthrough videos because I'm still experimenting with that. Um, and I just want to provide more Patreon content. So I'm actually planning on taking, uh, working pretty much 50% November and December and then spending the rest of the time, my time just making Patreon content. That's the plan. But speaking of reviews, a couple of people have mentioned about the, pa the possibility of them doing reviews for the channel. Now, I've done a couple of guest reviews before. Uh, Paul Mazzoni did one and Mark Cook from Aircon did one. If you want to do a guest review, please let me know. Um, it's not actually that difficult, I think. You just effectively need to set the phone up somewhere, you know, on a stand or whatever. Uh, or if you've got a camera, even, even better. Um, and talk to me and it's just a five or ten minute video with you talking about your favourite game or a game that you like or even a game that you don't like. If you've just played a game and you really didn't like it, um, then please do a video. Um, but yeah, let me know. If you're interested in doing a guest review uh, to obviously help out the channel with having more reviews on it, then uh, then let me know. Um, now, going back up my list, I've just realised I'd forgotten to mention Tabletop Gaming Live. That was the list last weekend. So Tabletop Gaming Live is the first convention put on by the people who run the Tabletop Gaming magazine, which is a physical, non-volatile storage medium magazine that comes out in the UK. Um, I thought the days of, you know, actual physical magazines had gone, but uh, but not. And the and the magazine is really popular, uh, and I've read a number of them, and it's it's pretty good. And I've got to know the editor Matt quite well. So yeah, Tabletop Gaming Live was the first event of its type uh, of its of the people who were organising it, and it took place in Alexandra Palace at the end of September. Now, depending on who you speak to, the event was a success, it was okay, or it was a complete failure. The venue was very quiet. Now, there were probably about three or 4,000 people there over the two-day period, which sounds a lot, but the venue was big, the aisles were big, and that made it look really quiet. And what was sad to see is that there were a number of people who were at the event taking photos of the aisles when they looked really empty. And they did look really empty because they were quite wide, saying, oh, there's no point coming, there's hardly anybody here. Okay, now that's disappointing, but it was really quiet and I had a fairly easy time running demos where I was. It wasn't the normal constant flow of people. But then you speak to other exhibitors like Alley Cat Games, Yay Games, Osprey Games, people like that, um, and the Fantasy Flight Games area. Those areas were absolutely swamped all day, every day. There wasn't a moment where the tables were not being used for gaming. So some areas were very, very busy. The aisles were pretty empty, but that's because everybody was sat down actually doing stuff. As a punter, Surely it was ideal. You didn't have the crowds. You can go along. You can play whatever game you want, whatever game you, whenever you want to play it, and you're not having to fight for crowds or anything else like that. Now the downside of it is there were a number of exhibitors there. Specifically, what I'm thinking of is the war game stands. So there were a number of exhibitors there with war game stuff, like loads of miniatures and loads of paints and everything else, and they had really big booths. And every time I walked past, there was nobody in them whatsoever. That was obviously dis dis disappointing for them. I don't know whether they're going to be back next year. Um, I want to go back next year. I think next year will be the, uh, the, the the deciding factor because I think if a lot of those exhibitors really didn't like it or, or you know it was it was a waste of time or money for them, then they're not going to go back. Uh, we'll have to see. So yeah, Tabletop Gaming Live. I went there. I enjoyed it because I got chance to... I, I mean, I demoed games and I met some new people, but I also met... 
a lot of my patron supporters and I met a lot of friends that I hadn't seen for a long time. So, you know, I really enjoyed that. I also got a chance to do a seminar uh, on how to teach games. And it was the biggest seminar I've, I've ever done. There was about, I don't know, 80 or 100 people in the audience, um, which is the biggest turnout I've had for a seminar ever. One of my friends joked because there was, there was nothing else to do. So people just came and watched my seminar. But I'd like to think that <laughs> that's not the case. Um, but yeah, that, that went really well and that was really good. So as I say, it, it, there's, these, there's these two sides of the story um, of people saying, oh, it was really quiet, there was no point going. And then other people saying, yeah, our booth was absolutely you know, packed the whole weekend. Um, I spoke to Christoph from Meeple's Corner who was there and, and they, uh, it, it was worthwhile them going as a retailer. You know, they sold enough product to pay to, to effectively. They, they, I think they did more than break even. I think they made a profit on it. So I said, are you going to go back next year? And he said, yeah, definitely. So, the, you know, a few retailers did really well out of it as well. So anyway, Tabletop Gaming Live, I'm going to be there next year. Um, yeah, there we go. Right, so that's what I've done this month. That's what I'm doing next month. Uh, we're also watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5. Uh, that's what we're doing in my spare time while I'm... Uh, sitting downstairs and sorting through boxes of stuff. But anyway, let's wrap things up there. Oh no, there is one more thing I'm doing in October. <laughs> I'm going to Essen. Um, it's in three weeks' time. Um, three weeks today, I will be on a plane on the way to Essen. It's just a small little get-together with me and a few friends. Um, Podcast 65, as I mentioned earlier on, is going to be the pre-Essen show. Right now, I have no idea what's coming out at Essen, really. Um, but we'll be talking about it on that podcast nearer the time. If you are going to Essen, please come and find me. I will be working at the Cephala Fair Games booth. I will be demoing Founders of Gloomhaven non-stop for four days. I might get a toilet break if I'm lucky. Um, but please come by and say hello. Now, a lot of people, every time they come by uh, when I'm working at a convention... Send me a message afterwards and say, Paul, came by to say hello, you were busy and I didn't want to interrupt you. Please interrupt me. Please do so. Because I'm going to be busy. Whenever you come and see me, I'm going to be busy. Um, there isn't a time when I'm not going to be busy. So please just interrupt me, just either wave or tap on my shoulder or something and say, hi, Paul, I know you're busy, just wanted to interrupt, but just wanted to say hi. And, and that's fine. And I really, really appreciate that. Obviously, I've got the Gaming Rules Meetup on the Thursday night. Now, we did advertise 50 tickets for it, which have all gone. But it's in a pub, so if you want to come along, the 50 tickets was just really to see how much interest there would be in it. And it turns out there's actually quite a bit of interest. So Thursday night, Fitzpatrick's, uh, we're going to be there. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, Essen is next. When I get back from Essen, uh, it'll be almost November. And then we'll crack on and see how we get on from there. Anyway, as always, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for making this kind of video possible and a lot of the other content that I make. And until next time, take care and thanks for watching.